Rebecca Dow is on a mission. She says it's long past time for New Mexico to move forward. Right now, I think we need hope. I think we need hope for a better future. Dow was elected to the New Mexico State Legislature in 2016. The Republican represents District 38 in the State House, which includes parts of Grant, Hidalgo, and Sierra counties. Dow was part of a recent Solutions Journalism Network focus group in Truth or Consequences, the Sierra County town of about 6,000 people known in these parts as T or C. Dow completed her first legislative session earlier this year and says special interests have a major voice in New Mexico politics. I think there's a lot of special interest and a lot of uh, the people who have the, loud, the largest voice or the deepest pocket or the longest relationships in our state do get heard more. Uh, I think that's what I learned as a freshman legislator is that uh, to be able to get to Santa Fe and advocate for your cause definitely makes a difference. Suspicion about special treatment runs high in T or C. Sierra County is home to one of New Mexico's biggest economic development projects. Spaceport America was launched with a public vote to approve local spaceport taxes about a decade ago. Local taxpayers have paid a portion of the quarter billion dollar cost of the facility through gross receipts taxes that were approved by voters in Sierra and Doña Ana counties. The state general fund also provides money for its operation. I've heard mostly that people feel like it's a boondoggle. It does, it does seem like a boondoggle to TRC, but I mean, we've been here for a long time and heard about the spaceport for a long time, and it's still kind of, you know, a nebulous idea, even though there's a building and a sculpture. Jessica Murphy has lived in TRC for eight years. Another member of our focus group, she reflects the view of many here who are wary of Spaceport America. But government officials often tout the potential of the spaceport, including TRC city manager Juan Fuentes. We're fortunate that it is in our backyard. Uh, I think just like as any new venture, you know, it takes time to develop and grow. But not all states have a spaceport. And we, you know, we know that that's a new industry that's up and coming. There's more activity going on, especially more, more private investment. There couldn't be a better location than downtown TRC for our event today. We had a chance to talk to folks about the future of the city a future that a lot of folks are hoping will be very bright if Spaceport America takes off. But of course, there are enormous concerns about the future of the spaceport and all of New Mexico. In recent years, New Mexico has faced one budget crisis after another. This has led to program cuts and a failure to provide regular cost of living adjustments for state employees, as well as many local government and university employees in departments that depend on state funding. In this environment of budget austerity, some find continued spending on what are described as economic development projects like Spaceport America particularly disturbing. Critics say the money would be better spent on inflationary adjustments in employee compensation and infrastructure, which provide both immediate and long-term benefits for the state and local economies. New Mexico's continued failure to increase education spending in line with inflation has resulted in a widening gulf between New Mexico teacher pay compared with other districts. For example, a starting teacher in Las Cruces Public Schools makes $34,000 a year. Just down Interstate 10 in El Paso, Texas, starting teachers make $48,300 a year in the El Paso Independent School District. Low pay and white collar jobs contributes to a lagging economy that also means low pay for many blue collar jobs. Jared Bartu of Bartu Sand and Gravel and Truth or Consequences also participated in our focus group. It's tough. That's the hardest thing we face is finding good people. And when I find them, I got, we try to keep them, you know. A lot of them leave and go out of town, make more money, you know. U.S. Census Bureau numbers for 2016 show New Mexico's median household income was a little more than $48,000, over 10,000 less than the national median of more than 59,000. Bartu agrees education is an important priority for improving the state's economy, but he says K-12 education does not provide enough support for vocational instruction. I learned how to weld in high school. Um, I think they're not pushing 
the trades thing as much, um, and they're not encouraging it. You know, everyone's want to make a $100,000 a year doing nothing, and uh, that's not reality. Along with investment in education, those who work in economic development say New Mexico must learn from other states that place a high priority on helping communities rather than spending on individual companies or industries. It's not a new idea. Companies are attracted to locations with a highly educated workforce, good infrastructure, and a high quality of life. Way back in 1986, the Committee for Economic Development said, financial subsidies are rarely a significant concern in wise business location decisions and usually amount to little more than a government giveaway and burden on taxpayers, including corporate taxpayers forced to subsidize their competitors. To help with infrastructure, leaders in truth or consequences say additional funding is needed from the federal government. I think a major piece of that is actually helping the smaller communities uh, to improve their infrastructure and replace some of their, uh, their, their infrastructure because those are high ticket items and obviously in order to recruit businesses, in order to recruit uh, people to come into town to promote some of uh, our economic activities, we need to make sure that we have the, the adequate infrastructure in place. While everyone in our focus group agreed growth and new opportunities are needed in TRC and all of New Mexico, there's also a yearning to hold on to the state's culture and way of life. Jessica Murphy has lived in Sierra County for eight years, but she's a lifelong New Mexican, having grown up in Hagerman, a Chavez County town with a population of a little more than 1,200 in the 2010 census. New Mexicans don't exactly always want things to change. We like things to be laid back. We value our clean environment. We value open spaces. And we value a quiet life. And so there's, there's something to be said for that. Now, of course, when you compare that with, with uh, you know, demographics that show that poverty is, is kicking our butts or that you know, our, our kids don't have a good quality of life, there has to be some sort of balance there. But, but for certain, we do need to value what we have because it's really important to a lot of people.